Well, so I had this problem with a locked up compressor uh, on one of the trucks. So I guess what happened was it, it seized up and then engaged and it kind of burnt out the clutch and pretty much smoked it. So I uh, kind of wondering what's inside there. So I figured we'd take it apart and see what actually failed and what uh what locked up and what's causing it to not turn anymore. Um, it was off of our F550 power stroke. It um, what is it? I think it had hundred thousand miles on it, or ninety something like that. It wasn't a ton. So anyway. I got it sort of taken apart, and I figured I'd uh, set the camera up and make a video. So, so we have one little nut there, or bolt there, I mean, for um, for the clutch here. If I can get it back apart. It's just kind of got a spline splined on there. There is a shim that'll be in here, so you can shim this. Um, it's that right there, little tiny thing. But you can see it's kind of kind of all cooked there. It smells terrible too, in case you're wondering. So it's had a snap ring on it that was right here. Take that off. This actually, the, the bearing isn't even really turning on this anymore. It, it slides right off. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be kind of pressed on there. So this, this bearing here is actually pretty seized up too. That's not spinning. So I don't know if that's because it got hot or if it just locked up from sitting. I mean, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it comes on when the defrost comes on too, but you see you're only getting about that much turn before it before it stops. I don't think you can replace that bearing. It's staked in there. Anyway, so this smells horrible, just so you know. I think it was on fire, to be honest. See, it's pretty burnt. I'm gonna kind of toss this out because I've been smelling this thing for a while. Maybe I can hide it back inside this again. Mask the smell. So he had some long bolts that were in there. These guys, I think they were Allen head cap screws, pretty long. And they went through the whole thing. So I think there was actually another clip inside here, another uh, snap ring in here too, maybe. No, no, there wasn't. So you got that. I think this is the valves of it. I think there's little, little, um, little like fingers in there, kind of like feeler gauges that are, that are in here. So as it's like a one way valve. So I think as it pumps, I'm pretty sure there's little pistons in here and it'll pump up and it'll open that valve up and send the pressure through. And then when it comes down, it closes. Let's see if I can. It's going to be a hole. Thing. So you can see right there, there's the little valves, little check valves, or whatever you want to call them. Um, what do they call them? Reed valve, I think. So right in there, that center would open up. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Probably won't be able to see them. You can kind of see it. See the light as it opens. See, so it's one way. So right now we're still kind of bound up. So I think I found the problem already. It looks like we got a, 
a melted piston right there. See how it's all melted around the edge? I think that guy's probably going to be the issue. Unless it actually it looks like it maybe lost a piece or something like that. As you can see, maybe. I don't know if you will see. Right there, there's a piece of it kind of sticking up. It's probably jammed up in there. So, oops. The bottom, we got the same setup. So it must kind of oscillate back and forth. So I'd imagine the bottom kind of comes down, pushes that open, and maybe it comes up through one of these holes right here. So as, as the pressure comes down, it comes around and up. Well, that's not a hole. Those are the threaded ends. So right there, you got a hole. So maybe it comes down and pops up through there. So I can get this one out too. Yeah, so that's kind of what happens. So it all pushes through the reed valves down into this base and circulates around, and then it comes up through that hole right there and sends the pressure someplace else, I'm guessing. check valve it's kind of like a half a like a button or something like that a little half half a circle half a ball whatever probably was in there as a check valve let's see we got two more bolts here I'll pop those out pull these guys out I don't know if Maybe not from where we'll get that apart. Feels like it. There's our guy. You can see it did some damage right in there. I get the camera back on. See if I can see what you can see. Got a flashlight, maybe. So you can see that one's pretty galled up and all melted and such. That's the guy that was probably seized up. Looks like. Looks like it's more the piston that's transferred to it. So there's the one in question. Put that anywhere. This is the one that kind of, yeah, it definitely kind of wore off of this onto the other one because that's that's uh, missing right there, or or it just kind of jammed in there. But. So it looks like this thing's kind of like a corkscrew. It's got like a curved end or a curved plate on there. So as the thing spins around, it basically just kind of walks like this and causes those pistons to pump back and forth. See? Let's 
Good pit pliers. Let's see. So, yeah, they got another one jamming up too. Not getting much movement in there, but. Unless that's where one of those balls came from. So it wasn't, it's not a uh, check valve. It's actually one of the little pads that this thing rides on. Let's see if we can get you in close enough. So in there, you see that little, it's like a little half half moon thing or like a half a ball. And, th and that goes up in there as a socket and then the flat spot rides on this plate here. So that as it, as it goes around that flat spot stays on this plate and then the ball kind of goes into that little recession there on the piston. And one of them actually fell out into that bucket. So obviously, I think it came out of out of one of these. Yeah, this one's jammed up on both ends. Let's see if we just take it right out. Pull this apart at this point. See, so that's, that's what I'm talking about right there. These little doodads. They sit kind of in that socket there and slip around on that. So that's what the pistons look like there. So you have one piston on each side. And as this thing spins, it moves the piston back and forth on that. Kind of make it a mess here. So this has looks to be like a thrust bearing. I don't know if it was in this one or not. Must have fell out. Oh, there it is. So you got like a thrust bearing in there. It rides on this. I think there's one on the top and the bottom. This is on the top. Basically, that holds it in centered so it doesn't move and it, it takes up the the side to side thrust of the pistons but you kind of see that's how that is so as that spins see how it goes up and down makes the piston go back and forth what was this so this was the guy that caused all the trouble so that's why we had that one that came out. That might have even been jammed in there too. I don't think so. I, I mean, you saw this was pretty, pretty wedged in there. But it it came out a little easier than I thought it was gonna. But you can tell that's kind of the failure point right there. 
and then it started just kind of digging into this. So it's probably all right for a little bit. And then just started kind of hammering on it. mangled it up but it would appear that that guy is the problem yeah so that, that doesn't even want to move in there this end might have been jamming up too That's a pretty tight fit. Yeah, that's a real tight fit in there. Very tight tolerance. So, anyway. I don't know if anybody was ever wondering what's inside one of these things, but that's what's in them. So I'm going to clean this mess up and throw the scrap out and get the smelly clutch out of here because it's a little bit, it's calmed down now, but when I first took it out, man, this whole place stunk like it. So anyway, hope you find that interesting. Thanks for watching.